Good morning and welcome to our harvest service this morning, whether you're with us in the building or online with us later on. It's good to, to be here with you to celebrate God's um, harvest and all that he provides for us um, throughout the year. So it's really lovely to be able to celebrate that. As always, I would really love to say thank you to the flower ladies. They've done a beautiful job, so please do have a look around um, as you... Um, as you go after the service, have coffee in hand and have a look at the beautiful flowers. They've done us proud as they always do. So thank you to the flower ladies. There are refreshments afterwards, so please do stay, have a drink, have some food um, and enjoy us. Enjoy the fellowship together afterwards. Um, just a couple of notices for the things that are coming up. We have our Bible course, which is starting not this week, but the following week and also a bereavement course. So if it's something you're, um, the Bible course is just looking at the Bible more in depth, um, and that's uh, uh, several weeks that we go into um, Advent with that. And the bereavement course is for anyone who has lost a loved one. It's not necessarily a, a strongly Christian course, it's just a course with a professional counselor that teaches and goes through how to deal with our grief, whether it was recent or um, in the past. So um, please do um, have a word with me if you're interested in that. That's five weeks, um, five, week, five evenings, and then an optional sixth evening if you wanted to stay. So please do see me if you want to do either of those courses. And um, in Great Glen, our um, Harvest Fate is on the 8th of October. So if anyone would like to help, or just come and enjoy, please do let me know. It should be a good laugh. Also, we have, neither of them are here, unfortunately, but we have two really special birthdays to celebrate. Does anyone else have a, bir have a birthday recently? Dave, you've had a birthday recently. <laughs> well, we can still sing happy birthday to you. Is there anyone else who's had a birthday? Right, Eli, has it been your birthday or daddy's birthday? Is it Eli's birthday? Yeah, right. And were you 18? Seven, right, brilliant. I won't ask Dave how old he is. <laughs> so that's a lot of birthdays. So we've got Dave and Eli, and Bernard has just turned 80, which is worth celebrating, and Danny, who's not here either, has just turned 40 today, actually. So. Um, Let's see if we can remember all those. Dave, Eli, Bernard, and Danny. Shall we sing happy birthday to them? I'll, I'll try to say it in a list. <laughs> So it's lovely to be able to celebrate those parts of our lives that are, are, are so important. But it's also at times where there are sad things that happen as well. And we want to, this morning, remember the Castlemans um, who have lost their life in this last um, couple of weeks. So I just would like to stop and say a prayer for, for them and ask the Lord to be with their family. So, Father, we thank you for the life of the Castlemans, Lord, for all that you have done in and through them, Lord. We pray that you would be with their family, that you would surround them and keep them during this time of grief, Lord. We thank you that you are a God who understands, Lord, and I pray that you would just bring them peace in the midst of their pain. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us now begin our service. Right, so our first song is Come Ye Thankful People Come. So please do stand with me if you are able.
please do be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to God, the God of all peoples of the earth. I'm now going to ask the Barber family if they would like to come up, and they're going to do this next part for us. Read it. Um, and if you could respond in the words in bold. For the colour of forms and your creation and our place within it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For our daily food and those who work and skill bring our good gift to us, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the gifts and graces inspired in human minds and hearts, for insight and imagination, for the skills of research, which bring healing and fulfillment to the lives of many. We bring our thanks, good Lord. For the light and change of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability for new life and growth out of barrenness and decay, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For new hope and strength in our communities, especially in your church and among all you call to serve you, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For all in whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience, and humility, and all the fruit of the Spirit, we bring our thanks, good Lord. For the life we have been given, and for all those who you have given us to share it. We bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much for reading that for us. That was lovely. Um, so, children, you need to be able to see the screen somewhere. If we, uh, there is one here, <laughs> if you can't see it. So, we've got a video that just is telling us about what um, God's harvest is all about. So we're just gonna watch this for a moment. Um, we normally have an all together time, so this is a time where we're gonna um, watch a video and then we're going to sing the Harvest Samba, which you have the, um, it is actually on the screen. I just thought it might be a little bit harder to follow. So if you just have the words with you, just in case, but the words will be on the screen. So let us watch um, our story first. God's story, seeds in a farmer. So a part of God's story is about some seeds in a farmer. And it goes like this. Jesus traveled from town to town, teaching about God everywhere he went. Lots of people followed. One day, a huge crowd came to see Jesus. So many people that Jesus had to get into a boat while the people stayed on shore so everyone could see and hear him. Jesus helped people to understand what God is like by telling stories. We call those stories parables. That day, Jesus told this parable. A farmer went to his field to plant some seeds. Some seeds fell into a path. Before these seeds had a chance to grow, some birds flew in from out of nowhere and ate the seeds up. Some seeds fell onto stones and rocks. These seeds started to grow, but their roots couldn't go deep enough to get water. And when the sun came up the next day, it burned up the plants. Some seeds fell among thorns. They grew, but so did the thorns, until the thorns got so thick they blocked out the sun and rain. Still, other seeds fell into good soil that was perfect for these plants to grow. These seeds grew into big, tall plants, and they made seeds of their own. And those seeds became big, tall plants too. Eventually, those seeds grew to produce many times what was planted. When he had finished, Jesus said, whoever has ears should listen. But not everyone who heard the parable understood it. The disciples came to Jesus and asked, why do you use stories when you speak to people? And Jesus explained that just because people hear information about God doesn't mean they understand it. But sometimes when we hear a story about God, we can understand something about him that we didn't understand before. Well, people must have still been confused because Jesus went ahead and explained the story of the seeds and the farmer. The farmer scattering seeds was like Jesus telling people about God's plan to rescue them. 
Remember the seeds that were eaten by birds? They are like the people who have heard about God's rescue plan, but didn't understand. They never got a chance to learn about God or start to follow Him. The seeds that fell into stones and rocks? These were people who heard and believed in God for a little while, but they gave up when following God was hard to do. Their faith wasn't very deep, like the roots of the plant weren't very deep. What about the seeds that fell among thorns? These were people who heard, believed, and started to follow, but they couldn't trust God with their whole life. Their worries and selfishness stopped them from growing, just like thorns blocked the plants from getting sunlight and water. And finally, the seeds in the good soil. They're the people who hear and receive Jesus' rescue, and then they follow Jesus, and their faith keeps growing no matter what happens in their lives. They grow strong and healthy and help other people to follow Jesus too, just like plants that grow and produce seeds to make other plants. Jesus wants people to know that it's not enough just to hear his words or stories. We can put our faith in Jesus and follow him. Basically, we have to trust God with everything and do what he says, even if that means some people don't understand us, or even if we get worried and make mistakes. And if you're watching this, that means you can trust God and do what he says too. And that's the parable of the seeds in a farmer. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus told stories called parables. One parable is about seeds in a farmer. Some seeds were eaten by birds or fell among rocks or thorns. Some seeds grew in good soil. The farmer is like Jesus. People who put their faith in Jesus are like the seeds that grow. And that's a part of God's story. show people how they can love each other and how we can care for one another. So harvest isn't just about the food, but that's an important part. It's also about how we use our seeds and the goodness in us to share and care about other people as well. So as we think about that harvest, we're going to dance now and um, dance away if you'd like to. This is quite a fun song. So um, if you want to get a wiggle on, please do. Um, this is called the Harvest Song, but now most of the children probably have learned it at school at some point. But um, as I said, the words will be on the screen, um, and they're on your piece of paper if it's hard to follow the screen. So please do stand if you're able, and we will sing together the Harvest Song.
Please do be seated. So now we're just going to take a moment to come before the Lord, to ask Him um, if, we've, if anything has gone wrong, to ask for forgiveness, to set our hearts right. Sorry, you're having a hard time hearing me. I do apologize. It's too far away from my... Is that better? <laughs> I'll put it on my shirt. Sorry. Okay. It's just a time to say sorry to the Lord and um, ask him to forgive us, to be with us in all that we do. So let us confess our, for, our forgetfulness of the needs of the poor and repent of the ways in which we waste the resources of the world. Lord, you give justice to those who are suffering and bread to those who are hungry. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you, lo you loose those who are bound and open the eyes of the blind. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you watch over the strangers in the land and uphold the orphan and the widow. Lord, have mercy. So let us just take a moment to reflect on this past week and come before the Lord. So we say together, Lord, have mercy upon us. Forgive us where we have gone wrong and sinned, and help us to walk from now on in your way. Amen. May the God of love and power bring you back to himself, forgive you and free you from your sins, and restore you to the newness of life by his Spirit. Amen. And I'm now going to ask Hebe to come and read or collect for us. Let me just make sure she's got my mic. Eternal God, you crown the year with goodness and you give us fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ is your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of Holy Spirit, one God and now and forever. Amen. Thank you. So um, now we are going to have the song, um, All Things Bright and Beautiful, and I would ask all the children to give me a hand. What we're going to do, if you can go to all the adults and see who, if anyone has any tins or, or food for the harvest, if you would um, collect those and bring them up to me at the altar. So I'm going to go stand at the altar as the adults sing this song, and you can bring the food up to me.
seated as we have our next reading. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Normally I stand up and talk to all you adults, but I'm not going to do that today. So I wondered if the uh, younger people in the uh, congregation like to come out, and I'm going to talk to you, well, tell you a story. And when I do stories for my grandchildren, they always say one thing, let's sit on the floor. So we're going to sit on the floor. Come on, everybody. <laughs> you adults can listen as well. Hi, my name's Roger. Hi, right. hello. Hi. How do all good stories start? Once upon a time, that's right. Or once upon a time, there was this village in the middle of a beautiful countryside. People live there, farmers all around, cows, corn, wheat. They were very lucky. Now in the story there are two people, very important people. Hi. First one's a young lady. Her name's Maria. 
Her mummy and daddy, they own the local greengrocers. She was bored above the shop, but mummy and daddy did really well. And they bought a big house on the end of the village. And daddy, he was very important in the village. Everybody looked up to him, looked to him. Things to do, the, when they wanted things, when they needed help in anything. He, he helped to run the village. Every year at harvest, Maria always had this lovely basket of fruit and vegetables to bring up. Everybody looked. It was also very good because all the stuff, all the fruit, vegetables, all the things that were brought to the church, they were given out to those people less fortunate. So everybody used to like maybe this year. Can you hear me all right? This year they would get basket from the greengrocer. Now this particular year, Maria went down as normal in the morning, ready to get all the things that she was going to put into the basket. But her father was busy and he said, leave it, we'll do it at the end of the day. Well it came to the end of the day, it was a Saturday, going to church the next day on Sunday. And all that was left was what nobody else wanted. It wasn't the best, because that had all gone. That had, that had been sold. So the potatoes looked a bit knobbly and got little chits sticking out of them. The apples, oh, they got some bruises on them. All the other things seemed to be not quite as good as they should be. Maria was very disappointed. But her daddy said, don't worry. And he, by manipulation, putting it into the basket, putting pieces of paper around, he hid all the blemishes. So it still looked good. But Maria knew, knew in her heart, it wasn't as good as it should be, as it usually was. Now, the other person in this story of ours is a little boy. And his name's Barry. Don't see many Barrys nowadays. Barry had lost his mummy and daddy to a disease that had come around. And so he lived with his granddad. But even more so, when Barry was born, his little legs and feet were not straight. They were turned in. So he found it very difficult to play games with the other children. And people have this funny thing that if you can't run and if you can't maybe do all the things that they can do, that maybe you're not as clever as they are. So Barry used to get called names, especially by the other boys. Maria, she didn't like this. Maria had a heart as big as anybody could have. And she was friends with Barry. Now Barry, Barry and his grandfather weren't very well off. But Barry told her about something his grandfather had done when his mother was a very little girl. He'd planted a tree. And that tree was an apple tree. And every year, he and his grandfather, he and his, well, the, grand, the daddy and the daughter, and then the grandfather and their grandson, used to look at the tree. And it used to come into leaf, but it never had any blossom. And you all all know that if you don't get blossom on an apple tree, what don't you get? You don't get apples. No. So they never got any apples. But then this particular year, this same year, in the spring, Barry came in so happy. He said, Maria, there's blossom on the apple tree. There's blossom. We're going to get apples. And as the year progressed, some of the flowers never set, so they didn't get any apples there. Some of the flowers did, and there was fruit. But the apples fall, don't they? Some of the apples fall off. Some of the birds I mean, had some. And in the end, as it came to harvest, there was one apple left. That was all. 
He was really excited because he said, when it's ripe, granddad says, we're going to take that apple and we're going to share. Harvest Festival. Everybody turned up at the church. The church was packed. Who come? Christmas. It's afternoon. When I came, it was standing room only. Right here. Oh, you got me that one. Blimey, I've got more, more microphones than they know what to do. <laughs> Hold that. Hello? Can you hear me? Cop turned on, so you Maybe you can hear me more now. Ah, good. Where was I before I was so rudely interrupted? So, I, yeah, so it was Harvest Festival. Everybody had arrived. It was full to overflowing. And the vicar stood at the front and gradually he asked for them, just as we've just done now, bring out all the things you've brought to give to the church. And the children came out, and the adults came out, and they brought all their things up. And of course, Maria came out with her basket. And everybody looked at it, and oh, wonderful. It looked really good. Maria knew it wasn't as good as it could have been. Everybody had given everything. But everybody had noticed that Barry and his granddad had nothing. They hadn't brought anything. The vicar looked, and Barry smiled, and he got up, and he walked from the back of the church all the way down with nothing in his hand. He put his hand in his pocket, and he took out the most beautiful, the most perfect, the most delicious-looking apple you have ever, ever seen. And he gave it to the vicar. Now the vicar knew what this apple was. It was the one apple off the tree that had grown that year. And it was perfect. The vicar looked to the granddad and the granddad nodded his head. So he took the apple and he took it up, and all everything else was laid out, as you've seen there, around the altar. But he took that one apple, and he placed it on the altar. Everybody looked at it. It was perfect. See, what God wants from us is not anything. It's the best we can give. Now, we all have different things that we can do and things that we can give. But if we give what is the best from us, that's what God asks of us. He asks us to be the best we can. And as a society, he asks us to be the best we can. This year, in this northern hemisphere, the harvest won't have been as good as it should have been. You all know that there is a, a war in Eastern Europe and in the Ukraine and that is the breadbasket, in a sense, of Europe and the world. And there's less. And maybe there'll be less for us. But we use, because we usually have so much, we use, we give some of what we don't need to other nations who are poorer. I just worry that this year, we won't give the best. We won't even maybe give as much because we have less. Others will get less. I think that 
we have more than anybody else. So remember something, all of you. Always give of your best. Remember there are those much less fortunate than you or me or your mummies and daddies. Always remember them when you have much, that they have little, and you maybe can just give something back a little more, that they may have a little more. You know, you've been the best audience, better than my grandchildren at listening to a story. I never got interrupted once. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I hope that's been something you'll take away and remember. Thank you, everybody. offer our prayers to God. God, the beginning and end of all things, in your providence and care, we watch unceasingly over all creation. We offer our prayers that in us and in all your people, your will may be done according to your wise and loving purpose in Christ our Lord. Lord of all life, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for all through whom we receive sustenance and life, for farmers and agricultural workers, for packers, distributors and company boards, as you have so ordered our life that we depend upon each other, enable us by your grace to seek the well-being of others before our own. Lord of all creation, hear our prayer. We pray for governments and aid agencies and those areas of the world where there is disaster, drought and starvation. By the grace of your spirit, touch our hearts and the hearts of all who live in comfortable plenty and make us wise stewards of your gifts, Lord of all justice. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, remembering those in hospital and nursing homes and all who are known to us. We pray for all who care for them. Give skill and understanding to all who work for their well-being. Lord of all compassion. Hear our prayer. We remember those who have died, whom interest to your eternal love in the hope of resurrection to a new life, Lord of all peace. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. We offer ourselves to your service, asking that by the Spirit at work in us, others may receive a rich harvest of love and joy and peace. Lord of all faithfulness. Hear our prayer. God of grace, as you are ever at work in your creation, so fulfill your wise and loving purpose in us and in all for whom we pray, that with them and in all that you have made, your glory may be revealed and the whole earth give praise to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So let us say together the prayer that our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So we'll stand now and share the words of the peace together. So please do stand with me. Um, in this, you can shake hands, hug, whatever feels more comfortable. So please do stand. The harvest of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The peace of the Lord be always with you. So please do offer one another a sign of peace.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Thank you for today. Peace be with you. Continue standing as we sing, uh, we plow the fields and scatter, and there will also be a collection during this time. That just remains a, a blessing but please do join us for refreshments afterwards and thank you for your um, for coming thank you for the food that you share that will go to our local food banks so thank you for all that you've done today may God the Father bless you who first sowed the seed of eternal life in your hearts may God the Son bless you who nurtures you with the rain and the sunshine of love May God the Spirit bless you who brings all things to fruition and may the blessing of God Almighty be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So please do join us for tea and coffee and refreshments at the back.
right? Is this like it's five o'clock somewhere in the world? Is that what it's like? It's my fault. It's my fault. It's totally my fault. I had nice all the children, and I'd forgotten the reading, so I just yeah yeah. Yeah, it's my fault. Totally my fault. Sorry. Yeah, do you help yourself, girls. 